Hola Seekers! My name is Kim and welcome to a Pick a Card. In this reading, we will receive messages from your spiritual team. And your spiritual team will be different for each and every one of you. For it may consist of angels, archangels, spirit guides, spirit animals, power animals, or ancestors. It is whoever you resonate with and feel around you, protecting you and guiding you at all moments in unconditional love. So to receive these messages, we'll work with tarot and oracle cards, with hand-drawn charms, keywords, stars containing letters, numbers, and astrological signs, and at the very end, we'll pull out notes containing messages. Please know that this is a timeless reading, meaning there is no specific date or timestamp to the messages. At whatever moment in time you decide to watch the video, the messages can still apply to you. Okay, now let us take a moment to pause and meditate, for it is time to pick our group. Okay, folks, so there are three groups to choose from. The first group is the polar bear, the second group is the badger, and the third group is the cardinal. Please take as much time as necessary. Pause the video if you need to. To skip over to your chosen group, please head over to the comment section where the timestamps are provided. Okay, now that you've chosen your group, let's get into your reading. Hello and welcome to all those who chose and connected with group one, the polar bear. So before beginning the readings, I always ask to connect with the energy of each group and this is to help me get an inkling of what the reading will be about before looking at the cards. So the message I heard for you guys was actually a song called Signed, Sealed, Delivered. What I am getting from this is if you've been praying wishing or trying to manifest something your spiritual team just wants you to know oh this has been signed sealed and it's being delivered to you at this very moment um because i felt presence around me and it felt like they were trying to guide me trying holding my hand and leading me in a certain direction for example i'm getting this vision of you walking down the street and exactly what you want is right around the corner, but it's only if you turn right. And maybe your mind is thinking, let's go left, but your spiritual team is really pushing you, trying to guide you, pulling your hand to turn right because you will meet face to face with what it is that you've been trying to manifest. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm getting here. You guys got the polar bear. Um, we will look at this card more in depth. At the end of the reading but I am seeing the color blue I'm getting such calm and refreshing energy from this and the color blue for me always represents the throat chakra so it's speaking up um, letting your voice be, be heard I wonder if what it is that you want maybe it's a, a person that you want to meet and you might be a very shy person and when you meet this person you might clam up and your spiritual team really is encouraging you to to not downplay yourself and to speak up let your voice be heard because what you have to say is quite beautiful and it will intrigue this other person it might not be just one person it might be in terms of an interview or job or something but it feels like a breath of fresh air you're a breath of fresh air to whoever you're trying to connect with um yeah, let's get into the cards. So the first card, let me leave the pull up right here because it's so pretty. <laughs> the first card is to represent the general energy. So let's see what you guys want to tell you. Ooh, we have the green woman, number three. This is the empress. The green woman, I love her because for me she represents creation, manifestation. The number three is all about creativity and creating. It's that connection between the mind, the body, and it's the spirit. And when that is completely aligned, then we can fully manifest and create um, into this life. We also have like this symbol here that represents, you know, giving birth, giving life. This is mother energy. We have the milk energy here, which is all about nurturing. I always see the empress and even the emperor in this deck as forms of higher self. So I'm this, seeing this as your higher self. And it seems like she's ready. <laughs> like I'm looking at these two little creatures here and I'm actually seeing them as part of your spiritual team, be it your spirit guides, your allies, some form of spirit animals or power animals. And it's like your higher self is ready to bring these people or these spirits and these guides in into your life. It feels like this is the pot of creation. She puts them in and they manifest into this physical 3D realm. And 
These are to guide you. Again, I'm seeing a lot of creation energy, especially with this fire here, which talks about life and passion. We have this beautiful color green, and again, the color red here, which correlates with this fire energy. You're manifesting something. You know what? You've been manifesting something. And it's not like you've just been wishing and praying for it. You've been actively working on it in this physical realm. Meaning, let's say if you want a specific job, right? You haven't just been praying for that job, but you've been applying, you've been looking, you've been searching, you've been maybe perfecting your skill, perfecting your craft. Or if it's a relationship that you want, you haven't only just been wishing and trying to mold this very perfect individual, but you've also been molding yourself. You've been working on yourself, healing your wounds, working on self-love because this is divine feminine energy and that speaks about nurturing and also speaks about self-love. Um, maybe you've been healing your feminine energy, healing feminine wounds, and it feels like your higher self or your spiritual team acknowledges all the work that you've done. And it's like, it's the teamwork, right? Um, it's like a dance with the universe, right? It requires two people to tango. So yes, you manifest, you tell the universe exactly what it is that they that you want, and they work on this with you. But at the same time, you have to put in half of the work, right? You work together because you're part of this physical realm. You have to put in some of the physical work and the universe does the whole other shebang, the universal, the magical aspect of this. Um, so that's what I'm seeing here, teamwork, because the divine feminine also allows herself to receive. And I feel at this moment, the polar bear, I don't know, I'm feeling so much in my heart space and it feels like such a nurturing and receptive creature. I'm getting a very vulnerable energy from the polar bear. And I feel that's the energy you're coming into. And if not, I think your spiritual team wants you to come into this energy or needs you to come into this energy of receptivity in order for you to receive all that you've been wishing for. Because it's already here. You already planted the seeds. It's, it's like been growing. Um, all that is needed right now is for you to open up to it in order to receive it. Um, okay, I got this message. Being independent is a wonderful thing. Not wanting or needing to be codependent on something or someone. But know that needing help or wanting a partnership or wanting to share the love or what you've been working on with somebody else is not a bad thing either. Sometimes we need a partner. Sometimes we need a lending hand. And that is okay. That doesn't make you any less powerful than you, what you already are. Because remember, it's about co-creation. Mother Gaia co-creates. She co-creates with the universe. If you're aiming to build something, I feel like you can build an empire, a bigger empire than you already have with partnerships or new people that your higher self or your spiritual team is already planning on sending to you because they will bring something unique and different to the table because uh, i'm just seeing so much creativity and creation here with this green woman with the empress and the empress does speak about being independent being confident the Empress is above the Queen, so um, it's a very powerful energy. But let's look at the clarifiers. Sorry if you hear. It's the neighbor's dogs. We have release. We have rice. And we have the sun. Damn, you guys. Okay. Well, with release, I feel it connects with that message of releasing this notion that you can do it all on your own because that can become pretty harmful to the self. Yes, you can. You are a magician. You are the empress, but it's okay to need a lending hand. It's actually helpful sometimes to work with other people because like I always say, there's about 7 billion people in this world and it's for a reason because we're meant to form relationships. It is through relationships and connections that we learn and that we grow. Because sometimes being so independent or in this empress energy, it does not allow us to be vulnerable even with, our, with ourselves because every time we feel like we need help or every time we feel depleted in some way, 
we may be hard on ourselves. It's like, why can't you do this? You should do everything on your own. Why can't you? And that hurts the self because it's okay to need help. Um, so sometimes in order to play this part of an empress, we put on a mask or we put on facades telling everybody we're okay, I'm doing okay, I'm good, I'm well, I'm strong, I don't need anybody. When the truth is that maybe you want a companion, you want somebody to share all that you've created with your ideas, your heart, your beautiful spirit, your beautiful essence. You want to share it with somebody um, who meets you halfway. And so it's letting go of this idea that you need to do everything on your own in order to prove that you're powerful and that you're strong. Because remember, it requires a lot of strength and courage in order to be vulnerable. And I'm not saying be vulnerable just about with anybody, but at least with someone that, again, you feel meets you halfway. That is your emperor. It's okay to want a match. It's okay. Um, I'm also seeing this release card as seeds right? You've let go of the seeds. You've been planning these desires in your mind, um, these goals. You've been harvesting them in your heart and you're finally ready to plant them on soil. Plant them on this physical 3D to let them grow. You're finally releasing them. And that's the same energy I'm getting here. Like she's about ready to release these creatures, these spirit into this manifesting bowl. <laughs> Um, and then we have the sun energy here. The sun energy is also very reminiscent of this fire energy, this red energy here, which speaks about the root chakra, the solar plexus, and the sacred chakra. Those are the first three chakras, which is all about grounding, creativity, passion, self-identity, and confidence. And that's exactly what I'm getting with the sun energy. It's about being confident. It's about standing in your power, reclaiming your sovereignty, seeing yourself as the empress that you are. Now, I know most of you look at the empress and say that it's a woman, but that's just speaking about divine feminine energy. We all hold feminine and masculine energies in us to create a balance. And this is just exuding that feminine energy, which is about creation. And also remember about receptivity, allowing yourself to receive. Um, now, the sun is a very masculine energy, so I love this kind of balance here, like these two energies coming together. Again, this could be a person that's coming, that you're trying to manifest, and you're trying to manifest your match, right? And I feel like the universe is ready to send in suitors, to send in your match, but it's whenever you're ready, whenever you open yourself to it. Um, the sun energy also talks about success and joy. It's about passion and creation. The sun gives life. But remember, when the sun shines too bright, right, it's a ball of hot fire. So when it shines really, really, really bright, it can burn. It can cause damage. If you look straight into the sun, you can be blinded by the light, right? So it's, it's saying... Be careful with that notion that you need to do everything by yourself. You need to do everything alone to prove that you are an empress, to prove that you are this confident, to prove that you are this powerful. So balance your energies out. Allow yourself to receive. Allow yourself to receive help. Allow yourself to receive love. Allow yourself to receive companionship. And if you've been craving for that and you feel guilty over it, please don't. Please don't because that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to want to share what it is that you created. It's a beautiful thing to want to share your heart with somebody else. Um, and then we have Rise here. Again, this is such a confident, such an empress, emperor energy. We have the sun here being represented again, rising. We have these eagle wings, which is all about independence. It's about freedom, liberty. And we have this person who's in visualizing himself as these birds that has wings, that is able to fly free, that nothing ties them down. Nothing is impossible for this being right here. And that's exactly what I'm getting here. It's like rise in your power, rise in your confidence, rise in what it is that you desire, what it is that you want. Connecting with that and accepting exactly what you want at this moment 
brings a lot of power to the self because you're being truthful with yourself, because you're being vulnerable with yourself. And there's so much power in the truth. That's what I'm seeing here. But the sun, the sun, the light reveals all that is hidden, all in the shadows. So rise and do not be ashamed of your wants, for there's nothing to be ashamed of. The last card, a direct message, we have the mountains. And this is the Eight of Swords, okay? This card has come out quite a bit in the readings. So the Eight of Swords, if you remember in the Rider Waits Tarot, is this woman who is blindfolded. And she's loosely tied, and there's swords all around her. Sword energy is mental energy. Um, it's thoughts. So this entrapment is an illusion. It's more like a self-entrapment because this woman, if she wanted to, she could escape the situation, but she keeps herself in the situation because she believes herself to be trapped. She believes she is alone. And so I'm, again, I'm getting this with the feminine energy here with the Empress, this, this idea, I keep mentioning it, but this this idea of believing you have to do everything on your own is keeping you trapped in a way. And I'm looking at this Eight of Swords as keeping you trapped in this persona or keeping you trapped under this fake mask. Because again, we can present ourselves as not needing anybody, as always being strong, as always being happy, as always being cheerful, as always having everything together. When in reality... We don't, right? In reality, we can get messy sometimes. And getting messy sometimes, it's okay. Not having everything in order is okay. Not being able to check everything off of our checklist, that is okay. It's okay to give yourself a break. And that's what I'm getting here with the rise. It's like freedom. Release yourself from these chains of perfectionism. Release yourself from these chains of needing to be strong. What does that even truly mean to you? Um, because you come a long way, you yourself are already an empress. You don't need to prove anything to anybody else. And if you're doing this to prove it to yourself, my question to you is, why are you lying to yourself? Why hold in the tears when your body is begging to release? Why pretend to be this sunshiny person all the time when in reality, maybe you want to scream? <laughs> You want to sing aloud and let your hair loose. Why are you hiding that person from yourself? That person is also beautiful. Discover that person. Because with the mountains here, I'm seeing a barrier. And I'm seeing a barrier between the person you're presenting yourself as and the person that you truly are. The person that you're hiding. It feels like you're hiding this person. You're not letting anybody see it, especially yourself. And that's keeping you divided in some way. That's keeping you from receiving all that you've been wanting. Because it seems like you have been receiving your manifestations, but there's something more. There's something that you're craving. There's something that you feel that you're missing. And you wonder what it is, what it is. But it's something that you already know. You already know what it is that you want, but you don't allow yourself to accept this. Because accepting this maybe um, conflicts with this idea of notion of independence, right? Maybe it's a romantic partner or a companion that you want. And you're thinking, um, no, because I don't need a romantic partner because I don't need anybody. And so that conflicts, right? There's, there's struggle. There's inner mental struggle here. And spiritual team is asking you, release, let go. Allow yourself to acknowledge and accept what it is that you want. In this acceptance, you open up to receiving, okay? Um, but let's look at the polar bear and the message behind the polar bear. Come on, Fudge. In the presence of polar bear, we are reminded that bl that blending in can be as useful and courageous as standing out. Like his winter, in deep, silent contemplation, we are able to achieve new insight. Be standing back by standing back and observing, we are able to ready ourselves to share our most powerful gifts with polar bears. Tact, we learn to cloak ourselves in shadow, waiting for the right moment to emerge. He imparts patience, teaching us to employ strategy to carry on. I love how we have camouflage here because we were talking about putting up a mask, putting up a facade. 
and it could be mostly because you want to put up this face in front of other people because you don't want them to see you as weak. But by doing this, you're hiding. You're hiding a, a part of yourself that's even more powerful than you believe yourself to be at this very moment. It's like the sun hiding behind the mountains. Hiding behind the mountains because it's afraid that maybe it's sun rays here um, will be too much for whatever whatever's on this side. No, that's not true. Let yourself rise. Let yourself be truly seen. If some people are blinded by you, then that's okay. Maybe those people weren't meant to be in your life. But there are people who will really see you and appreciate you for who you truly are. Yeah, and your spiritual team is just waiting, waiting for you to, to rise in your authenticity without judgment of yourself. Because as soon as you rise, they will send these people in because these people are the ones who are waiting to see this you. Okay, but now let's look at the charms. Let's keep our palette over here. So we have our special acorn here. And whatever falls inside the acorn will be messages for you guys. So first, let's look at the charms. Okay, so that's it. Um, and then we'll pull out the keywords. Okay, so I think that's it. And lastly, we'll pull out the stars. Okay, so that's it. So let's see what we have. So this called out to me, we have reveal. Yes, reveal your, your true self. You know what? Just reveal what it is that you want. You don't have to reveal it to anybody else. Just reveal it to yourself. What it is that I want, truly, without judgment, just write it down. Tell it to yourself in prayer. And the universe will hear you and they will bring exactly what it is that you want. Once you reveal it, once you say, hey, I want this. I want a connection that's like this and like that. I want it. I am ready to receive it. That's you opening up. We have recognition. Yes, I also see the sun as recognition because it's being in the spotlight. We have a lot of that here. A lot of like being center stage recognition. Um, but I'm looking at this recognition as also recognition of the self, recognition of your desires and your wants, recognition of your truth, of your authenticity, recognition of your wounds, of your pain, um, of what is bothering you at this moment. What, you, what are you not okay with? That will reveal a lot of truths to you. You don't have to conform to things and you don't have to be okay with everything. You don't have to put up with bullshit. You don't have to put up with people in order to prove that you're strong, that you can get through this. You don't have to do anything, okay? So for the charms we have, the elevator, which speaks of ascension, escalating. Yeah, it, it reminds me of the rising. You're rising. You're allowing yourself to rise. I feel like you've done a lot of work on yourself. You've done so much work on yourself. And at this moment, maybe you feel like you're already at the top of the mountain, at the top of the world. But at the same time, you feel like you're missing something. You feel like it's, something's just not quite right because you don't feel like your complete true self. And it feels like this moment is going to be that other layer that you're going to be releasing these masks, um, these pretending to be something that doesn't quite fit your truth at this moment and that will allow you to rise even more to your true self to feel more like your true self um we have the middens here which sp speaks about spiritual connections again i feel like your higher self or your team is waiting to bring certain people in certain energies in into your life that will that are truly connected with your soul, with your spirit, with your heart. That is why it is crucial for you to show up as your true self because these people that are coming in, that is who they know. That is who they're, they've been told to connect with. 
this true self. And if you're not showing up as this, then they won't be able to recognize you. And that's what I'm getting here with recognition. Um, yes, so we have connections, soul connections here. We have the compass. Follow your inner compass. I'm seeing this as your truth. Follow your truth. Remember, this reminds me of Pocahontas. Remember, Pocahontas was getting this inkling. She was feeling something was coming. She had this, like, confliction between choosing her arranged partner and choosing the person she was truly in love with. Um, and she didn't really know where to go. But it's because she wasn't truly listening to her heart. She wasn't truly listening to what it is that she wanted for herself. So this is speaking about listen to what it is that you want and follow that call. And it's okay. It's okay to want for yourself. We have the letter R that might be significant to you, might be part of your name, part of maybe the name of the person you're trying to call in. And then we have the number six. So the number six might represent June. So maybe this connection or these people will enter in your life in June. Or maybe this is your birth month, their birth month or birthday. Or it's a number that you have been seeing or will be seeing. Six speaks about unions to me. It's like spiritual unions. Um, okay. And lastly, let's pull out messages. Okay. So we have... Maybe I should fast forward this part. So we have the message. No. And we have the greatest illusion of this world is the illusion of separation. And this is from the cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm, you see, yes, it's okay to ask for help. <laughs> this is your team validating this for you. It's okay to ask for help. Remember the message. Ask and you shall receive. It feels like your spiritual team is just waiting for you to ask because they have so many gifts to deliver to you. But remember, you have free will, so they cannot intervene until you ask. And the last message is, you're not losing me. Okay, so that's all I have for you, group number one. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment. Bye bye. Hello to all those who connected with group two, the Badger. So before beginning the readings, I always ask to connect with the energy of each group. And this is to help me get an inkling of what the reading will be about before looking at the cards. So the message I heard for you guys was feel, listen, hear. And what I got from this is no judgment. The badger is a blind creature. He uses all of his other senses to maneuver himself around a place. So I'm seeing this as using all of your other senses, using your intuition to maneuver yourself around a situation or a person. I also heard the word truth revealed. I got a feeling of depth with this group. It's being more in tune with the self, pulling back from a situation in order to be able to truly see it for what it is right not just see the surface base of it or listen to just what other people have been saying about a person about a thing but it's you allowing yourself to truly experience it sit with it and then decipher or gain truth from whatever this is um because i have brown here which speaks about earth energy which is grounding energy grounding yourself not allowing yourself to get carried away by emotions by assumptions um i also have this beautiful like indigo color it's like bluish purplish here and that reminds me of like the third eye the crown chakra which is where we receive information and clarity and we are able to see beyond surface um, and it also speaks about communication, the throat chakra. Um, so revealing truth, letting the truth be spoken. I love how it's like all dark here color and then we have this light here. So it's coming out of the darkness, right? But for the badger, it truly makes no difference because the badger is blind. 
So it's like when other people are barely realizing the truth, you already had the truth a long time ago because you were not swept away by assumptions by, or by your emotions, but you allowed yourself to use all of your other senses, use your intuition to figure the situation out. So the truth was revealed to you way before it was revealed to everybody else. That's what I'm getting here. But now let's look at the cards. So I'm going to leave the badger here. And this first card is to represent the general energy. Mm, oh my god. We have this year. This is the, what is this? The high priestess, I believe. But, okay, we were talking about sight and seeing. Now the seer, oh my goodness. Look, the badger does not see with its eyes. The seer does not see with, with her eyes, with sight. She has her eyes closed because she's looking deep within. She's using all of her other senses, her intuition to be able to see beyond and see the truth. We have here a form of divination. I think this is called scrying. Um, it's seeing through water, being able to see to other different places, kind of like remote viewing or being able to see in what we perceive as the future. And she's standing here right in front of this tree. And this tree in this deck is represented in the world card. So this tree represents kind of the center of the universe. It's the connection between this earth and the cosmos. It's kind of like if you've been traveling, this is coming back home, this tree. Um, so her standing here, and I love it because her gown even look like it's roots, like she's rooting into the ground. Her standing here, she's connecting with everything. She's gaining information through source, right? She's rooting herself, like we were saying, grounding herself in order to gain the truth. I feel your spiritual team is asking you, do not allow yourself to be carried away. If something arises, pull yourself back and you will be shown the truth. You will be shown the way. I feel like for you guys, grounding is very important. And grounding is just about being present being present in the moment. I'm just seeing like an argument between people. Sometimes when we're in that heat of the moment, we don't allow ourselves to be present. We're either more in our minds trying to figure out what we're going to say next, the, our rebuttal, or, you know, being so angry that we do not really see what is happening around us at the very, very moment. We're not being aware how the person is reacting the person that's in front of us their gestures their posture that can say a lot about a person um, reveal a lot of truths and so we kind of like all of that bypasses us and spirit is telling you if you just center yourself if you allow yourself to listen instead of just instead of using judgment um, and see the situation instead of just looking at it at surface based a lot of truths will be revealed to you. And it feels like if it's a conflict between a lot of people or a situation that involves a lot of people, you will have that insight knowledge before anybody else does. And I'm getting this message. If you do, right, if you if you have this inkling, if you have this knowing and you express it to others and they do not listen to you, it's not your job to keep telling them or to convince them otherwise let this play out let this play out because the truth will unfold the truth will be revealed eventually so I'm, I'm seeing this as like taking a step back from the situation and kind of I'm seeing just like a protective shield around her protecting yourself from this energy by not involving yourself in this now, we usually go to the seer for information. So you might actually practice some form of divination. You might actually be a tarot reader or just you might do your own form of, of divination practice. And again, I'm getting this message of as the messenger, one of your duties is to deliver the message. But it is not your job to convince the person that this message is true. It is up to them whether they want to listen to the message, whether they want to acknowledge it, whether they want to do something about it. 
The only thing you had to do was deliver the message. That's it. Um, you trying to persuade the person, convince the person, just takes energy away from you. Okay, because it's always free will. It's up to the person whether they want to listen, whether they want to see this truth or not. Right? Again, like they say, the truth is different for every person. That's the other message I'm getting here. I also see this as you opening up to all of these like spiritual gifts. I believe we all have these spiritual gifts, but they just lie dormant in, in most of us. And it's only when we open up to it that we start revealing all these gifts that we have and we can practice with them. And so I feel like during this moment, it, I feel like a situation is going to arise, a conflict of sort, some denouncements, um, and you're just gonna have this knowing. And maybe people are not gonna believe you, but you're gonna have this truth. And it's going to be validation for you when this truth is finally revealed to the public. It's like, I knew it, I just, I knew it. I had messages, I saw visions, I just had this knowing. Um, and yes, now the truth is revealed. Now everybody can see it. Um, but you didn't have to wait that long for it to come to the surface because all you had to do is look deep within to gain that truth. Um, and so now you're discovering these gifts. You're discovering the power of intuition, of listening, of being silent, of holding no judgment in order to hear the truth. Well, let's get the clarifiers. We have Father card. We have passage and we have bound in reverse. Ooh, okay, so the father card for me represents masculine energy. Masculine energy is very grounded. It's very grounded in this physical world. Um, but I love this father card because it's represented by the stag. And the stag is the king of the forest. He's the protector of the forest. So it's, I feel it like a very spiritual being um, because he respects the independence and the sovereignty of all the creatures in the forest. If you've ever looked at films or documentaries, the stag is always by itself. It's always standing on some hilltop looking into the forest, looking at the creatures of the forest, but he never really interacts with them. He never really messes with them and tells them what to do. And that's what I'm seeing with the seer energy, is you giving information, but not interfering with the free will of other people. Let them believe what they want the, to believe. You don't have to prove or change their minds. It, that is not your job. That it's not your responsibility. By doing so, it's inter it's kind of using these um, antlers, you know, against them. And it tires you out. And it doesn't help them change, change their perception at all. Remember, you can only lead a horse to the water hole, right? But you can force the horse to drink the water. Um, so I'm seeing compassionate energy here. Compassionate energy towards... The messages you are delivering to the truth that you already know and to the people who want to accept or not accept this truth. Feel compassion toward that. Open your heart space. When you allow yourself to feel that compassion, you don't feel obliged or feel the need to convince people of a thing or force them to change their views about a certain situation um, or force them to believe you. You don't, you don't have to have that validation from them because you already know your truth. The Father card is also very, very wise and intuitive. Um, with the Passage card, yes, it's just like if, if you are not already practicing some form of divination, again, I feel like this moment, this conflict, whatever this is that arises, will kind of be a passage, a door opening for you to, to allow you to realize these gifts that you already had in you and to open yourself to them. I feel like Again, I'm getting like the tingles, but I feel like your crown chakra and especially your third eye is going to open up because again, we have her eyes closed here and that's just letting me know that she's not using her eyes, her physical eyes to see, but she's using her third eye. So you're going to get this opening to the spiritual gifts. It's like a passage to the spiritual realm or to see beyond. And if you are already practicing it, I feel like it's going to strengthen for you going to strengthen more because you're going to be letting go of this need again to to have people believe you right or to you know sometimes we give messages and we really want we see something and we really want to help people kind of like deviate from that or help them find clarity and sometimes people don't take the messages and that's okay because if they don't take the messages maybe that's not the truth at this time 
And again, it's not our, our, not our job to force them to see something. Um, it's just to put it out on the table for them to either take it or, or leave it. Um, and I feel like once you realize that, once you let go of that need to do something about this, um, your gifts will open up, open more up because I'm getting that with the bound in reverse. Um, if we had it upright, it means like there's some some restriction, um, some blockage. Um, but it being in reverse, I see you coming away from this. I'm also seeing how this person doesn't have a mouth. So it's not being able to speak up. And I, I'm getting this message of like, even if you do speak up, people do not hear you. People do not listen to your messages. People do not acknowledge what you have to say. And because people do not validate you, because people do not listen to you, you feel like you have no voice. But no, they are listening to you. The messages are being delivered. You are using your voice. But let your voice just come through in the way that it needs to. Not in a way that it's forceful. Just let it flow. Let it flow and the people who need to hear it will hear the messages. The people who need to take the messages will take the messages. Um, again, this might also be representing maybe you knew something about someone or a situation and you felt like you couldn't reveal it or people didn't listen to you, people didn't believe you, but do not worry, this will be revealed, this will come into the light pretty soon, okay? And that will bring such like relief and like release in you and freedom uh, because now other people are aware of this truth as well, not only you. So you're not carrying this truth like a burden anymore. So the last card is a direct message from Spirit. And we have the King of Wands. Um, and this is the bear. So the bear in this oracle deck um, is described as intuition. And we were talking about that, being connected with your intuition. Now the King of Wands is a very fiery and passionate um, personality. He loves to speak up. He loves to be heard, loves to be the center of attention. And I feel like the King of Wands always wants people to acknowledge him. And he likes knowing that he was right, that he was right all along. Um, he likes to be a leader. And and with the being paired with the bear here, it's kind of having that passionate energy, being a leader, but also having this very subtle kind of feminine energy here. And I think like these two energies mixed together form this father card, right? Is respecting others' free will, respecting others' sovereignty, respecting others' beliefs, and not wanting to change them because you see differently right um it's kind of knowing and owning your own truth and being okay with that if people do not see it the way that you do there's a lot of power in that because there's a lot of freedom in that because when we get stuck in like trying to change other people's mind we spend so much of our energy and effort trying to do that that we don't experience our own truth we don't live our own lives and your team really wants you to to live your truth, to live your own life, to know that you you are speaking your truth and that there are people that will hear you, that will listen to you. Um, yes, but that's what I'm getting here. Let's see. And so with the intuition card again in the passage, if you are not practicing divination, you are going to become aware of these skips um, pretty soon. <laughs> especially intuition or that third eye energy which is just having this knowing or, or seeing having visions and it's going to be through something that arises a conflict of sort i don't know why i'm seeing it but it feels something big even maybe maybe something public um like in from the public eye and you're just like i knew it i told you um and i'm also seeing like maybe if you work at a company it has something to do with that but i'm seeing it big i don't know why um, mm -hmm. number five represents change in zero is like infinite potential this is a gateway to your gifts to finding this high priestess this seer energy within you um, but now let's look at the charms oh no let me read this the back of the badger so it says manifestation of all the fauna badger is one of the most misunderstood creatures while believed to be fiercely protective of his abode badger is actually a very docile curious animal frequently found with his nose to the ground badger is adept at thriving in many environments 
With focus and ten, he encourages us to dig in and do our work. He teaches us about showing up in conscious participation. Badger is a tenacious tutor, a purveyor of manifestation, and a master of making life happen. Okay, so that's the energies for you guys. Now let us move into the charms. So whatever falls in our acorn bowl here it will be messages for you. So let's look at the charms. Okay, let's look at keywords. Okay, now let's pull out some stars. Okay, so the first message that we have, the keyword is practice. Practice, yes, so we were talking about spiritual gifts and we were talking about this passage card, a door, a gateway opening up for you. So I feel like once this is revealed to you, once you know you have this connection with your intuition, this clairvoyance or claircognizance, um, I feel your team wants you to practice with it. You don't have to be uh, a guru. You don't have to be a tarot reader. It's just practicing it with it in your everyday life. Because again, we all have intuition. But sometimes we shut our intuition because we just don't allow ourselves to listen. We just don't allow ourselves to truly see. We hold more judgment than no judgment. And so your team really wants you to practice this intuition because it will serve you along your journey. Whenever you have doubts or you feel like you're clouded, this will bring you clarity. This will guide you or to your next step. So practice this, okay? Um, then we have enlightened. <laughs> yes, this will bring much enlightenment. Um, I feel like the truth being revealed will enlighten a lot of people. Enlighten them about the situation, but I think it will enlighten you about your abilities and your connection with the universe, with spirit. And I feel like you understanding this truth about you not having to convince people about the messages that you deliver if you are if you already practice some form of divination or are, are a form of seer um, I feel like that will bring so much release and enlightenment in you and it would just allow you to open up more even more to spirit even more to your spiritual gifts um, so the charms we have is the palette with the infinity symbol I see this as infinite potential and I see this as the chakras all of them are lining together. It's, it's like, again, this enlightened energy. It's it's the seer energy. She's grounded here. And I love it because her staff here, we don't see the beginning and the end of it. And it reminds me of that complete alignment. I see it as it's grounded in the earth and then it's reaching up into the heavens and beyond. So she's completely connected. Um, so that's what I'm getting here, a, a connection, an alignment. And we have, again, we have the gloves, which speaks about spiritual connections, like soulmates or kindred spirits. But you know what I'm seeing it? It's like a connection with yourself, with your, with your own higher self, with your spirit. It reminds me of like this alignment and this connection. Um, it's a kind of rediscovering yourself and rediscovering your gifts. Um... Then for the stars, we have Gemini. So that might be your astrological sign or during the time of Gemini is when this will be revealed to you. And then we have Scorpio. So again, these might be significant. We have one last charm and that's the... Sorry, those are my neighbor's dog. This is the four-leaf clover. So this speaks about luck and abundance. Um, but it just reminds me of magic as well like magic and forms of divination. And that heart chakra that we were opening up it speaks about compassion. I'm seeing this like, believe in your magic, have fun with this. Do not be scared by your truth, by the knowing that you have. Um, it's part of your magic. Uh, but now let's pull messages. Okay, that was quite a bit of messages. Um, let's see.
I am here for you always. Oh my goodness. Close both eyes to see with the other eye. Damn, you guys. Yes, close both eyes, your physical eyes, to see with your third eye. This is a quote by Rumi. Oh, I got chills. Yes, yes, this is the spiritual group. You're you're opening your third eye, your third eye, you're seeing. This. I have not given up. Mmm, new beginnings. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel with this passage as well. New beginnings. New beginnings with your spiritual gifts. We will meet again. Be fearless. And the last message is... Yes! Oh, I feel like some of you were questioning something as I was pulling all of these messages and your spiritual team was like, yes, this is about that. Um, so yeah, so that's your confirmation or validation. So that's all the messages I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity, some relief. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you want to stick around for more readings, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye-bye. Hello and welcome to all those who chose and connected with group 3, the Cardinal. So before beginning the readings, I always ask to connect with the energy of each group and this is to help me get an inkling of what the reading will be about. So the messages I heard for you guys was here and also pay attention to the red flags or just pay attention. I actually saw this image in my mind's eye of the bird fluttering right in front of my face. So I get this message of not being able to see what's right under your nose. I feel like most of you have been searching for something, have been on the search for something or someone. Like this could be like a romantic partner. And I think your spiritual team wants you to know this person or whatever it is that you've been calling for is already in your life. It's already around your premises. But I'm also getting this message of having distractions. I'm seeing it like, that's not the word, but I'm seeing it like clones or double gangers who are pretending to be the one or what it is that you want. And it comes in as a form of distraction. So the color red is really popping out here as red flags, as pay attention, pay attention. Because while you're being distracted by all of these other things that shine and glitter and glimmer, you're not really focusing on what it it is truly meant for you. The exact thing that you've been wishing or praying for, it's like right in front of you, but you can't see it because you're distracted by all of the other light. So it's bringing focus and it's um, seeing clearly because what you want is already here. Um, but let's look at the, at the cards. So we'll leave the cardinal here. And the first card is to get the general energy of this reading. Mm, we have the sun of life. This is the Sun card in the Rider Waits Tarot. So let me get to the numbers. The so number one represents leadership, new beginnings. Number nine speaks about reaching the end of a phase. It's not really the closure of it, but it's reaching it because it reminds me of the Nine of Cups, which is about wish fulfillments, but really you're just receiving the Nine Cups. It's not the Ten Cups. It's not really having everything. Um, so the sun card here always reminds me of masculine energy and it's all about bringing things into this physical world, right? It's manifesting, but it's also working um, alongside the universe to co-create, to finally bring things into fruition. And this card speaks a lot about confidence and authenticity. 
I see that because we have the heart space here fully activated, fully open. And this man, wherever he is standing, is where the flowers bloom. And I'm seeing these flowers as your dreams, your ambitions, your goals, all those manifestations. Remember, the manifestations are seeds. When it's manifested, it's when the flowers finally bloom, right? So again, you're manifesting, you create the seeds, but in order for them to come full bloom, you need to dig them into the soil, you need to harvest them, and that's what the masculine energy does. So you've put in the work, right? There has been co-creation here. This also speaks about leadership. Now the cardinal um, has this very unique, very loud voice. Oh, I'm sorry, my phone stopped recording. <sighs> but what I was saying was, the cardinal has this very unique, very loud voice. Once it sings, it grabs your attention. And also with the color red here, it just pops. You know, it's like the center of attention. It reminds me of this leader energy about confidence. Um, so remember, the sun energy or the sun is at the center of the solar system. And it serves as a form of gravitational field. So it keeps all of the other planets in orbit, right? So I'm seeing you as being represented as the sun energy. If you're if you don't feel in this energy yet of being like leader, of being confident, of being in center stage, you will soon come into this energy. Because again, we have this heart space open. So it's like once you open up to your authenticity, to your true self, because that's what the sun also speaks about, being authentic, then you will be like the sun. You will be like this form of magnet. Now, the law of attraction states the energy we attract is the energy we're sending out into the universe. Um, so what I'm seeing here is that during this time, a lot of different people are going to gravitate towards you. And that's when the, the message of different people or distractions was coming through. Because these people... Since you're shining this bright, and it's because you're letting yourself show up as your true self, right? Without any layers, because we even see this man here in his birth suit. People are going to be so mesmerized by you. You're going to attract a lot of personalities. And most of these personalities are going to resonate with you in some way, right? Because of that law of attraction. Um, they're going to be similar to you, maybe their energy, their aura, maybe what they like, or their personality themselves might be something that's very attractive for you. But again, not all of these people are going to be suitable for you, are going to be your match. So that's what the message here of pay attention to the red flags because again you might be blinded by the light the sun energy is also right when it shines very very bright and we look directly at it we can be blinded by it right so that's the same message you can be blinded by the surface appearance of these people or because of this connection that you feel that you really don't see that this these people are not exactly what you've been wanting or what you've been wishing for because I'm, I'm being pulled to these spiral leads here. Um, that just reminds me of letting energy flow. And it just reminds me of manifestations. We have like three spirals here. And three is the number of creation. And all of these flowers here feels like suitors. Suitors giving you flowers or just people acknowledging you. Like a lot of compliments. And this might elevate you as, as well. Like, you know, people might create a pedestal. And you might... You might feel into the energy and feel elevated in some way. And that too can, can kind of unground you and not allow you to be truly in the present to see the true intentions of all of these people, right? Because they might also be so astonished by you that they might be blinded by your light, that they don't truly see you, um, as, you as you would want to be truly seen. Let's look at the other cards. <laughs> we have the voice, we have vulnerability, and we have perseverance. So the voice card. The voice card speaks about manifestations to me. It is only when the mouth opens, it is only when we speak up, then creation can occur, right? As long as this mouth keeps closed, then we're in complete darkness in the void. Nothing is created. 
And I, I see two people here, which reminds me of like partnerships of two spirits coming finally together, meeting in this physical world, right? Because they're already connected and united in the spiritual realm energetically. But now it is only time for them for this connection to manifest, to bloom in this physical world. And so again, you might be calling in a romantic partner or some form of partnership. It may even be a friendship, a genuine friendship. But there seems to be like one specific person for you, one specific person that truly matches what you've been want, wishing and praying for. And all of these other people that are will be presenting in your life are just distractions. So it requires a lot of focus from you in order to see or decipher who this person is. It requires vulnerability from you. We have the heart here again. We have the heart being represented here. It requires for you to open up and be connected to your heart. When we're connected to our heart, we hold no judgment. We don't see people at a superficial level. We connect with them heart to heart, right? Being vulnerable also means opening up, allowing yourself to sh truly show up in your authenticity. It's presenting yourself without fear. It's being like, here, this is what, this is me. This is what you get. You want it? <laughs> and that is, that is you. That's why this person comes with no clothes. It's completely bare and unapologetic. And that is, that is what is required. It feels like, I know this is not a popular movie, but maybe some of you have watched it, the movie Penelope. She's trying to find a suitor. And so every week or month or so, her mom brings in all these types of men for an interview um, to meet Penelope. But Penelope has a very distinguished face, right? And so not a lot of these suitors truly see her for who she is. They just see her for her facial features. And well, for the majority, her facial features are not appealing. So they run away, they run off. So in one, she gathers all of these suitors in one room and she just decides to appear in front of them, unapologetic, to reveal to them her face. And her mother asks her why she wants all of these suitors at once in one room and she replies to weed out the unlikely. And that's the message of getting here. Weed out the unlikely by showing up as your true self unapologetically. The people who do not want to meet you eye to eye, who cannot handle you in your, in your light, in your authenticity, will leave on their own. And let them leave. Do not chase them. Because if they're running away, it's because possibly they're not meant for you. The people who are meant for you, the person who is meant for you, will be the only one that stays. And I'm seeing that again with this with this like sun here um it's reminding me of the sun but it's reminding me of like the one like crowning you it's also like it reminds me of intuition of your gut feeling i have like a lot of little like circles here being represented here it's like focus point focusing and persevering i think if if you stop like if all these people start coming in and you start befriending them connecting with them and then maybe some of them don't treat you that well or maybe some of you disappoint you because they're they're not what you thought they were, or you realize that the intentions of these people were impure or they had a hidden agenda, you might get disappointed and you might think, oh, maybe maybe there isn't a person who would truly love me as I am or who truly cares to connect with me on that deep level. And your team wants you to persevere. They're like, keep pushing through because there is that one. But in order for you to see them, you need to also show up in this vulnerability. You also need to show up as an, an authentic individual because they're there. It just seems like you're missing them for some reason. It's like missing the mark. You keep missing the mark because maybe you're looking only at like, I'm, I don't want to say you're not. It's not like you're superficial. It's just maybe you're just looking at like surface things. Like maybe you have a list in mind and you're just thinking, oh, my person has to have blue eyes and blonde hair. And so you're only looking at the people with blue eyes and blonde hair. But maybe your person actually has green eyes and black hair, you know, and so you're ignoring all of those people who have green eyes and black hair. And so they're telling you, do not focus yourself so much on that. 
focus on the true spirit of the person focus on connecting with the heart of the people those who want to connect with you on the heart space will open up to you those who are not ready will not open up to you and do not spend all of your time trying to make them open up because if they don't want to if they're not ready they're not going to be ready now but it feels like the person you're looking for is ready to open up and connect with you and the last card so we have the shepherd and i think this is the page of swords or the knight of swords so the sword energy is about communications and it's also about revelations and truth and it would be in the page or the knight it feels like a messenger of swords it reminds me of a suitor so it's a suitor that comes in with the truth with the message it's also about blunt energy and being authentic like sword energy doesn't bullshit around so this person comes in unapologetically um towards you um, I might also, this might also be the person, like they might be a little loud, um, they might grab a lot of people's attention, and at points you might see them a bit arrogant, um, but know that it's not arrogance, <laughs> this is just how they are, like they're very confident in their nature, and it's because I feel like they've been through some things where they now know that it, it's a waste of time to pretend to be something that they're not. So they're just showing up and it's again the message of weeding out the unlikely because they know that if they just show up like an open book, then right off the bat they will know who is interested in them and who is not. Um, so the shepherd here, I like it because we have the sun represented again, which like the rising of the sun, um, like a new day. Um, here. I'm being pulled to the dog here, which speaks about loyalty, a, a loyal partner, a loyal friend, someone who is with you, with you through thick and thin. Okay, and I never read the messages here, but I was pulled to read it. And it says, the shepherd indicates an intense love, intense love of life and strong fellow feeling. So I'm getting the intense love and fellow feeling. Because I'm feeling such serenity here, such peace. Like again, like you don't have to pretend. You don't have to put up a facade. You could just be yourself. And in that, there's so much peace. Um, so again, which the person that you find you can be this, this authentic with, this vulnerable with, that is your one. That is the one. And it does, it is out there. He is here. I feel like he, she, this thing, this person is here in your life already. Um, yes, but now let's move into the charms. Again, this doesn't necessarily have to be romantic. This could just be friends. Um, again, maybe you're gaining popularity and a lot of people are being attracted to you. And just remember, some people may have hidden agendas. Some people's intentions might be, might not be that pure. Um, so again, you don't have to be vulnerable with just about anybody. It's who you feel comfortable with, okay? Um, but it's better to show up always as your true self because then you know who are the people who are willing to stick around and who are the people who are just here for maybe something else for that hidden agenda. So I was putting everything away and I forgot that I didn't read what is behind this oracle card. I did so for all the other groups, so it's only fair that I do so for you guys. So we have cardinal authenticity. It is easy to make assumptions about cardinal based on his vibrant color, but this would be a hasty deduction. In truth, he is not self-important. On the contrary, he has a healthy understanding of his place. He is neither bold nor shy, extravagant or haughty. His brilliant color is a true likeness of his authentic self. Modestly confident and uninclined to brag, he finds no reason to shy away from his hue. He teaches us to embrace our uniqueness and discover the power of authenticity. Yeah, like I was describing, maybe this is the person that's coming in and they seem a bit arrogant in the beginning and that puts you off. But it's not arrogance, it's just them showing up as their true self. Um, yeah, uh, so that's all I have for you guys. Now let's move into the charm section of this video. So whatever falls inside this acorn here will be messages for you guys. Okay, so I think that's it. Now let's pull out some keywords. Okay, so 
that's it for you guys and now let me pull out some stars containing letters and numbers and astrological signs okay so the first keyword that we have is a validate okay so if you've been asking for something or if you've been wondering if someone in your group you know might be the one this is to validate you or if you've been wondering where whether people in your group are maybe here for self-interest right if they're not not true to you then this can be validation as well mm, i feel like this is also validation that what you've been searching for is here already in your premises um the next one is beginning um, so we're talking about beginnings with this number one and the sun card. Yes, this feels like a new beginning. And it feels like a new beginning because you're allowing yourself to open up. When we allow ourselves to open up, things shift in our life. That's when we feel like tower moments come in because relationships and contracts end or something like that. And we see it as something bad. But in reality, it's because things that no longer serve us or things that do not m really match us leave our lives for things that truly match us can come in and that's when beginnings occur um so we have commitment yeah. sorry my phone got cut off again i just stopped recording but i pulled the commitment one and i was saying that this just validates that there is a potential partner here there is someone who is ready to commit to you amongst all of these people that are showing up there is that one that is ready to start a partnership with you so persevere believe because this person is here around you already they're just waiting for you to see them um, and for you to accept their offer so the next one that i pulled was the hummingbird and i say that the hummingbird i always see it as spiritual guidance representing messages from spirits signs or synchronicities when the hummingbird appears it usually well for me it's a sign of pay attention pay attention to your surroundings pay attention to the situation so if you see a hummingbird when you're talking with someone or thinking about someone, pay attention to the feelings that arise. Pay attention to that intuitive, knowing to that intuitive feeling because that will give you some form of sign. Um, so we have here the cups. So this for me represents telepathic communication, but this also represents like a deep connection. Somebody that when you speak to them, when you talk to them, they listen to you. They truly, genuinely listen to you and they care for what you have to say. They don't just like turn the conversation in their direction. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to how people show up in conversations because I feel like the person that is meant for you will really listen to you. They will really listen to you and you will feel that because again, we have the vulnerability card here. So when you communicate with them, you can you can really open up like your your heart feels safe enough with them to truly open up. And that will be a huge sign for you. I'm also seeing about like talking about your dreams and ambitions, your goals with this person um, and not fearing being judged or ridiculed at all. It's like they support you. But it's also not like that um, over positive or over enthusiastic type of person that's like, oh, yes, you can, you can. It's like they will be realistic with you because they care enough, because they want you to truly achieve your dreams that they will tell you, okay, you want this, we'll start working on it. Or you want this, then let's look at this and remember that this can happen. So let's prepare for this. And they will do like plan A, plan B, plan C with you because they're really showing up here. They're really listening to you. And they're really interested in helping you out. Um, then we have the camera here, which speaks about pers perspectives. Seeing things in a new perspective. You know what I'm getting this as? I remember I mentioned that there were a lot of like circles here. And how about focus? And that's what I'm seeing with the lens here. Focus. In the picture that you're taking... There is a one person that is standing out. That person is the one for you. Look at the picture. See the details. 
for that's where you will find this person. It's like focus, focus your lens. Because at this moment, the image might be a little blurry because there's so much going on. So focus your lens on the right direction. Um, we have the letter J. Oh, we have the letter J again, JJ. That's a name. Um, that may be initials as well. Okay, the, the letter J might be very important because it came out twice. So there you have it. Um, might be their name, your name. Um, then we have Virgo. So this might be their sun, moon, or rising, your sun, moon, or rising, even their, even their Venus sign. Um, or during the time, the season of Virgo is when um, you will finally connect with this person um, or truly see them. Um, acknowledge them. Yeah, so that's what I have here. Oh, let me pull the messages for you guys. So let's see. Okay. So the first message, you can ask a question um, as I'm opening this up and these can serve as an answer for you. Oh, you are doing such a beautiful job. First message. I am here for you always. Mm. This is an answer. Yes. And the last one is, hmm, it'll be all right. Okay, so that's all the messages I have for you. Please let me know if you like this reading, if it resonated by leaving a like or a comment. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. And if you want to stick around for my readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye bye.